hey welcome back to the channel I'm out here today at probably one of the uh, unthought of crops in Kent County if I asked you to name crops that are commercially grown in on in Kent County or in Ontario for that matter but in Kent County this crop probably isn't one of them we're out here today and they're picking squash and uh, I'm here at Burkhab Farms in Tupperville and you'll recognize Rob he was Rob was on the channel with the tomato video and uh, we're gonna have a chat with with Rob here tell us about the squash uh, yeah we're just picking squash today it's going great it's a beautiful day. Oh, can't ask for better. After yesterday's little bit of rain, that was really good. We uh, we're doing two loads today, so we're just picking the first one now. We're gonna pick it for the second one when the truck comes back. There's a crew out in front of us with machetes knocking off the stems. We're not allowed to bring any stems or like a chunk of wood on the squash. So we try to keep that to a none. So they're the, doing that ahead of you. Yeah. So all these fellas are doing is picking them up. Picking them up and double checking that there's not a stem. They got like a sharp knife oh, so if corner they're just... on the side, they can whack it off on the conveyor. So uh, just for interest sake, how many people we got here? Uh, I didn't do the... Got to have close to 18, the guys. 18. Yeah. So well, we're filling it pretty quick. It only takes us about an hour, an hour and 20 minutes to fill a semi -load. And then the uh, and then we got other work on the car. So then you'll reload these for tomorrow. Yeah, so two trucks a day. Load the one for the morning. He's at six. Comes back for ten. Load it up again, and it's back at four o'clock. And we load that up for the next morning. So the big question now I know is on everybody's mind: What do they do with all the squash? Ah, uh, so they some of it gets all diced up for like soups and frozen in the grocery store. And then some of it goes for puree for like constitutional, like uh, old folks homes, uh, baby food, ho hospitals. We used to feed a lot of squash when the kids were little. Yeah. Little jars. Yeah, yeah. So it takes a lot of little jars to go to one of those squash. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. So that'd be good. Like I could eat this puree, I wouldn't need my teeth. No, exactly. So, so I, I might be set. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is this? Your invention? No, this this machine comes out of uh, California. It's a Ramsey Highland. You don't see them hardly ever. So, what do you use it for besides squash? Uh, we use this one in the uh, or like cauliflower last year, and then we rented it out to another guy this year for uh, peppers. And then we have a second one that we just drink and use the peppers. But our pepper one, it, it can't take the squash through the debris pan we got on it. And these squash are too big to go through the debris pan area. Through the what? A debris pan that sucks the leaves out oh, of the squash. Oh, oh, yeah. Part of the peppers. Yeah. So, how many tons of squash per acre would you get? Uh, the factory budget's, I think, for uh, 15. 15 tons. Ton. Yeah. So, you're going to load a trailer with 40 ton. You're gonna do just over two, two and a half acres. Yeah. Like that, yeah. Some of those guys make it look like samurai warriors. We got one guy and he's unbelievable the machete. One hit takes the stem right off, right at the edge of the squash every time. So you don't mess with that guy? Nope, no, nope, he's <laughs> he's our oldest, youngest, the oldest guy, littlest guy, and he's unbelievably good. What about frost? Does the frost hurt the squash? No, nope, no frost doesn't. But I guess if it uh, if it stays freezing over like minus four or something like that, that hurts them. So they got to be stockpiled into a big pile if that happens. But they they said they've only had to do that one or two times in the career of the squash, so that's not a big deal. Then. They actually say the squash the frost helps it the uh, skin feel better. Oh. and then brings more sugars into the squash. So do you know the process at the factory, what they do? I haven't seen it yet, but it's supposedly they, they cut them in like, they at least want to cut them in fours, and then they go into a chamber that uh, they flash steam, like they blow steam through it, and that peels the skin and takes the seed 
cavity out of it. And then after that, that's when they do the dicing and then the freezing. So what you got is a crew here and, and the front guys are moving the squash so the tire don't run over them? Yep, yep. So are you using two buggies or just the one? Two buggies, two buggies. And then they're dumping it into a walking floor trailer. And then it just walks So they the walk it off. Yeah. Well, I was just talking there thinking about all the crops that we grow in, in Chatham, Kent. I met a load of carrots on the way out here, a whole semi load of carrots. You know, you'd never think, that, you, you know, I don't know how many acres of carrots there is. I don't know if you But there's carrots, potatoes, squash, onions, onions, uh, uh, cauliflower, broccoli, everything goes on the table pretty much grown in the top of that. And now, you know, there's uh, getting to be more strawberries being grown. Strawberries year round. Year round strawberries. Unbelievable. Yeah. I know we have a, a guy that started trucking for a tip this year, and he's like, I never knew there was so much vegetables around in the area. He's like when you, you don't know when you're driving by, but when you start working in it, you're like, wow. And it doesn't take that many acres either, like for like squash, like I don't know how many acres to be in Chatham, Kent. But uh, it, when it, you it, think of how much squash is out there, you're like, who eats all this? Like, how does it? A lot of people though. Oh yeah, but when you just see that, that's a lot of squash, like truckload after truckload, you think that's a lot of tables that has to go on to get yeah, all that. Yeah. So where's your help from? Uh, everybody's from Jamaica. Yep. So how long are they here for? Uh, so the first guy started showing up around the uh, 10th of April, and then the last guy turned the lights out around uh, 1st of December. Yep. So do everything from tilling the ground to Planting, driving truck, driving semis, kicking tomatoes. Yep, yep, you name it, they do it. It's a big job to have enough work to keep them busy. Yeah, yeah. But Especially rainy days. It's, the trick is trying to figure out the jobs to keep for the rainy days and trying to. But yes, there hasn't been any rainy days, so all those jobs are getting back. Yeah. To the guys the other day, it feels like we're behind, but we're not behind. We're just not cleaning equipment up out of the yard or putting it away or maintenance. This thing is gentle on the squash, isn't it? Like the belt conveyors just run kicky boo. It's the thing. If you're trying to move product in a field like this, this. Oh, I see some of the fellas. I saw another guy picking squash today, and what he did, he struck it down the middle, and they were doing. Like yeah. It doesn't take us, yeah, you gotta run back that field, but for the thing that's 90 feet or 80 feet wide, you don't gotta do a whole lot of pass. Everybody just jumps on. It takes two or three minutes to get it to the end. Well, will you have two and a half acres when you get to the end or yeah, not? Yeah, yeah. We're, about, we're about just over a truckload. Awesome. Yeah. So you can, you know, yeah. fill we need the a break by the time everybody wants to get a drink of water, move there in the field. So okay. This hydraulic driven. Yep, yep. I'm just, I'm just adding in there's What I'm doing is I'm moving uh, a squash plate on each hydraulic motor. So each one's a different hydraulic pump going to each axle. Oh, okay. And then I'm kind of like skid steering it like, uh, like a dozer. And then, and then with these levers, I can turn the direction of the two wheels and then the other levers are all for the conveyors for the conveyor to the trailer and then the end of the conveyor I can lift up the down. So is it a diesel? Yep, yeah, it's a little four cylinder John Deere running. So you're gonna have to switch this eventually to electric. Oh yeah, it's a big extension for it. So what I'm here with Ed and uh how are you Ed? <laughs> good, good, really good. So what we're going to do is uh, dump this load of squash on the trailer. Yep. And I want to film that and show everybody how that's done. All right. In, uh, how many ton do you put on here? 45 ton. 45 ton, right around 45. And this is a walking floor. Yep. Yep. The walking floor, they just go there. All comes out the back, and just shells out the back. So is this one where uh, two thirds comes or it all comes back and then a third goes up, the third goes up, and the third goes up. Yeah, yeah, that's the one it is, yeah. Yeah. And it empties really nicely. We put a tarp at the front so it all yeah, brings uniformly. Yeah. 
but it's all it's clean when it comes back home. This is perfect for this kind of trailer. Yes. You know, and this kind of product, it's hard to it, it's hard to do it any other way because it wouldn't come out of a dump trailer. Well, it comes out of a dump trailer. All at once. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty. Anyway, I'll get back out of your way. All right, I'll get pulled up here. And there you have it, another load of squash heading to the factory. Well, that's about going to do it for the squash. If uh, you got any questions, put them in the comments. I'm sure I can get a hold of Rob anytime. And, uh, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.